So how does somebody work on their natural breathing to sound better and more natural when they're in the bo- in their booth working on their voiceovers? Yeah, I love this concept of booth breathing, okay? Matter of fact, I love this concept that you can't booth breathe. So uh, you will hear people go, well, just when you're in the booth, you know, work on your breathing, don't breathe so loud, and that'll work. And I'm always thinking, ah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just going to say I'm 60. Um, I've been breathing my whole life. Nobody, I don't remember once, anybody, and, and you run your little Rolodex here. See, uh, see, how, see if you can remember. Has anybody ever said to you, wow, you really breathe loud, or you really breathe quiet, or you really breathe great? Or terrible, or I, I don't remember anybody ever saying a single word. Anybody to you, Donnie, ask you, mention how your breathing is just so wonderful? <laughs> I, I've not gotten many compliments on my breathing throughout <laughs> okay. my life, unfortunately. So here's the deal. We've all been doing it our whole life. And to get good at it, it is brain dead simple. It is some of the simplest practice you could ever help somebody with to teach them how to breathe comfortably and have quiet breaths. It's also some of the hardest things I've ever done as a coach to help people do it because of the minor side effect, which is this. I have 58 plus years of breathing while talking. I'm over 60 and I'm just rounding. And so I'm going to assume I started when I was two. So So if I walk in the booth and I try to change my breathing, it's just a really hard thing to do because I have all that experience. And let's say you and I sit and we do an exercise for two minutes, five minutes, two hours today. Then... Okay, well, then if you talk to your dog or your spouse or your friend or somebody tomorrow at lunch and you spend an hour talking with them and you don't do any of your breath reduction type things, then you negate almost all your practice by just having a normal conversation. And we all have more normal conversations most days. And so cumulatively, boy, can you say that for me, Donnie? Cumulatively. Yeah, that word. It's very difficult unless you become very conscious of it when you're in your regular life. And forget booth breathing. I'm just going to go on record and saying, unless somebody practices outside the booth effectively and consistently, they cannot go in the booth and then consistently do it. And I, my wife's a singer. Most of you know that. Donnie's mom's a singer. And my wife's a singer, so it's all the same person, by the way. Amazing coincidence. Yeah, that's <laughs> the way that works out. So when, she, when when we started in this business seven and a half, eight years ago, Donnie got us started. She was used to going, <gasps> and because she can maintain these super long phrases. And, she, and a singer, really, I don't want to say they get paid for being able to do long phrases, but it is the mark of a good singer where they have this great control and this great posture, and they take in tons of air, and there's music going on 98% of the time, so nobody cares, but it turns out that that works beautifully in singing. So she starts doing this. A mic is six inches away. What is she doing? It's a habit. She went to school for it. She gra- This is her degree. She spent years and thousands of hours learning to go, <gasps> and then producing a really great sound. And, and that's fine, but it doesn't work when we're in the booth. So here's a couple things we need to do. Let's start with exercise number one. The first thing people need to make sure is that they're not breathing through their nose. <sighs> I don't care. It just never sounds good with a mic six inches away. It, in real life, nobody cares. But when a mic is sitting so close to us, <sighs> does... It's really hard to do that very effectively and very quietly. I'm not saying it's impossible. You can do it, but it is a very difficult thing. And I don't recommend that that's what you work on. In the booth, we're going to work on having our mouth open. And you can practice this. So here's practice number one. Take in a breath that is quiet as you possibly can, and it does not need to be quick. So let's take a breath in. Donnie, you can do this with me. So it's going to go something like this, and then we can do it together. So we're doing. Now, hopefully you don't hear very much of that. All right. It should be very, very quiet to yourself. Just you open your mouth like you're yawning. And that's the perfect example. A yawn is a perfect breath in uh, as long as it's not a loud yawn. You can actually yawn very quietly and very discreetly. And you want to do that and you want to go and just get comfortable with doing that for a little bit. And you have to practice that. Just taking a breath with your mouth open. But then you can do the same thing without your mouth being really wide because it's really about opening your mouth and your throat. And you can do the same thing with your mouth not so uh, open, but you can end up doing it something like this. Where you can't see me going, but you can can hear. 
It's just gentle. It's comfortable. And start working on being comfortable with a breath with your mouth open. And you really need to do that. Now, here's the secondary thing. And then we'll get into the kind of uh, the, the part that, oh, any questions about that, DB? No, I, that's good. I had the same thing that the the same sort of habit that my mom had because doing sports broadcasting for a lot of years and I still do it. But if you're in the middle of a, a long, exciting play, you know, it's hard to take a break from that exciting play and take a new deep breath. So you learn to take a deep breath and then go for a long time on that. So that was something that I had to break when I first got into voiceover as well. Yeah, it happens for a lot of us. And really, and it might happen for you in that it's just the way you might have learned to, to talk. No one teaches you, hey, you have quiet breaths when you're a little kid. No one even thinks about it. It doesn't matter. Now it matters. So here's the next step. Now when you're in a regular conversation with your wife, your spouse, your dog, you're on the phone, you're doing anything where you're talking to another person or you're in the shower by yourself talking, you're in the car by yourself talking, they'll just think you're on your Bluetooth that you're talking on the phone. You use those opportunities to start talking and taking deep breaths that are comfortable and not loud with your mouth open. And you need to do that now. The here's the first exercise I love giving people. Next time you're eating dinner with somebody that you know, and you're having a regular conversation, because it's not a critical conversation, you're, you have the ebb and flow and it's comfortable, learn to take a nice, gentle breath while you're having conversations with others. That is the key to becoming good at breath control. And if you can't do it outside the booth, you almost will never do it consistently within the booth because we'll go back to our normal habit, whatever we've been doing, in my case, 50 plus years, Donnie's case, 35 plus years, whatever you, however old you are. So you are going to practice with the people you're with in regular life outside of the booth, taking very gentle breaths. And you can get really good at it. Now, here's the trick. They can't know you're doing anything at first. So the first couple of weeks you're doing this, you need to be stealth about it. Don't tell them you're practicing your breathing. I don't want my wife to know. I don't want her to go, what's wrong with you? I mean, she could say that for other things, but not for my breathing, not when I'm doing breathing exercise. 